we've been talking a lot about tradition lately um, with with my team and and just asking the question like what is our purpose for being what's what's important about the work that we do and um, you know tradition is wonderful and you start to ask yourself well, why is it why is it important and I think it's it it's uh, provides meaning and connection I think that's kind of where we've landed if you're passing a recipe from a father to a daughter or from a mother to a son it provides that connection and meaning and, and it's it's sort of a way of telling stories and, and talking about the past um, so I think that's that's what what I think about now when I think about tradition as far as cooking and recipes is that connection and meaning that makes life so you know so important <laughs> was just very lucky to have a family that spent a lot of time around the dinner table. My mother grew up in France and so she brought some of those traditions to our dinner table. We used to joke often that we would spend uh, you know all Sunday morning cooking a big Sunday lunch and then sit down and enjoy lunch together with my aunt and uncle and cousins and the whole time during lunch we were talking about what we were gonna make for dinner. So it's just like the, the quintessential French conversation on the table. You're just talking about your next meal. They definitely had an influence, and I think more so my dad's family who lived in, in Stowe. He would take us to see them regularly, you know, once a week. My great-grandmother was just the quintessential Italian-American grandmother, and we would eat dinner at one cousin's house and go over to her house, and she would want to feed us again. And she was offended if you didn't eat. I mean, she would put out all the food and feed us and uh, almost always send us home with some frozen uh, wedding soup or tomato sauce or meatballs or something that she had made for us. The Swiss chard tart recipe is something that I think of when I think about a tradition being passed down between generations. It's just one of the early recipes that I remember learning as a young chef and uh, it's something that, that I um, put on our menu when we opened our first restaurant. It's a really adaptable recipe, so it's nice because you can change it with the seasons and mix in different ingredients, or if you have a preference at home, you can mix in whatever kind of um, flavor you want into the, into the dish. It's one of those recipes when I think back on how I got my start and where I started as a young chef, it's one of those recipes that I remember as being kind of a, a, a turning point for me. Farmers in Ohio use uh, covers on their crops and they can extend the season for something like Swiss chard into either the cold winter months. So that's something that I think is really cool about this dish. So sourcing is really important and we try to buy as close to home as possible. So we're using the Smith's uh, sour cream and the Smith's heavy cream for this recipe and uh, local eggs. And it's just a really, a really comforting dish that, that is something that I think is perfect for the fall and the winter time. And it's a recipe that we've made at home, so my kids have been exposed to it. So it's, uh, you know, it, I think there's, there's, there's some storytelling there. And, and if I get to explain to, if I get to tell a story around that dish with one of my young chefs that's working in the restaurant, or if I get to tell that story to my kids, I think it's something that they'll remember and they'll want to take with them. Mm -hmm.